From the archives of the United States Cavalry, the true stories of Colonel Randall McKenzie and the cavalrymen he led. McKenzie's Raiders. His secret orders from the President of the United States. Clean up the Southwest. Make it a fit place for Americans to live. Wipe out the renegades, outlaws, and murderers. If necessary, cross the Rio Grande, knowing capture means hanging by the enemy. Discovery, court-martial by the United States Army. Summer, 1874, Texas border. Endless miles of refuge for 5,000 wanted criminals. Against them, Colonel Ronald McKenzie, out of undermanned, badly equipped Fort Clark. McKenzie's orders stabilize the border, ensure the safety of settlers. Despite incredible odds, McKenzie was doing the job. But now a brilliant strategist threatened the peace of the territory. Leading marauders with superb military skill and full knowledge of McKenzie's own operations. This was the fourth patrol sent in pursuit, like the others, dead in ambush. The main objective of these attacks was now starkly evident. Destroy McKenzie by discrediting his command. The epaulettes torn from the dead major's blouse and the scrawled words, I have not forgotten, told Mackenzie it could be only one man, ex-major Howard Duncan, former officer under Mackenzie's command. Something bothering you, son? Stand easy. Oh, no. Are you sorry you joined me? Of course I'm not, Howard. You must always address me as major. Yes, major. By rights, you should be a colonel by now. By rights, yes. Fifteen years in the field, and what did it get me? To stand in the sun in front of my own men, while Mackenzie stripped my brass, broke my saber, and drummed me off the post. There was only one way Mackenzie could stop this threat to his difficult task of governing the area, and that was rise to Duncan's challenge himself. On the night of July 18th, the patrol out of Fort Clark was under his personal command. See down there? Bullets. Fresh horses. They're sitting and waiting like you planned. Beats me why you wasn't McKinsey on our tail. I owe him something, and I want to pay him back. If it was up to me, I'd give him wide berth. As I'm in command, it isn't up to you. What if he keeps tailing us? That's just what I want him to do. I'll lead him right into the trap. Sun, sand, and death from thirst. Then we attack again. Waste no time, destroy everything that might help the enemy. We take no prisoners, carry no wounded. You will look at me when I'm giving orders, Mr. Cloud. This isn't the army, Mr. Duncan. Major Duncan! Any questions about my orders, Mr. Cloud? Whatever you say, Major Duncan. Then follow me. On July 22nd, 1874, four days out of Fort Clark, Mackenzie's Indian scout, Corporal Kill Eagle, picked up Duncan's trail while riding point for the patrol. This lonely way station, squatting in the burning sun, was the first real chance for water and further evidence that Duncan had learned his tactics well. They're here, maybe one, two hours ago. They got horses, guns and bullets from in there. Anything left? All dead. Water? Destroyed. Duncan's thorough. Rest now? No, he'll expect us to do that. Well, Duncan moving towards the border. Yeah. If he doesn't head for the Rio Grande, where's the nearest water? Lost Angel Mine? Last water. After that, nothing this side of border. If he's leading us into a trap, he'll head for the mine and destroy the water. If not, he'll make a run for the border. Which one? Only one way to find out. Sergeant, we're closing the gap. Let's move out. <laughs> 
On the fifth day, the gap between them was closed. Contact was made. McKenzie's still tailing us. He's coming through there. Good. Tactics are working out just as planned. Now, when we hit the Lost Angel Mine, I will accomplish a two-fold objective. First, we take the gold. Second, destroy the water and watch Mackenzie die of thirst. I say let's cut and run for the border. Cloud is a tactician, you're a fool. Mackenzie's moving into total destruction. This was the ex-major's chance to prove himself a superior tactician, using the very methods he had learned from Mackenzie himself. His plan, feinting the army patrol out of position by a flank attack. Two men were dispatched to the opposite side of the trail. Their task, fire on the patrol, show themselves and run. The chase would divert Mackenzie, giving Duncan and the other men time to strike the mine. <laughs> Signs. Duncan Close may be in rocks. How do we stand, Sergeant? Well, the horses will hold out till the end of the day, sir. As long as the men can move, they can shoot. Continue the march. Mackenzie despised Duncan, but he never underrated him. With Kill Eagle, the Colonel rode out to scout the area from a higher position. The trap Mackenzie suspected was already snapping close. As Duncan planned, the gunman suddenly broke cover, firing wide. Perfect. A perfect maneuver. I got to hand it to you, Major. Let's get mounted. There were two men up there, not five, and yet you went bucketing after them. Don't you see that's just what Duncan wanted? Yes, sir, I, I see that now. That was a feint. We know now they're headed for the mine. They've got fresh horses and a good start. If we follow that trail, he'll have plenty of time to destroy the water. I know shorter way. You do? Lead out. Hey! We'll take the shack, Cloud. Dennis, you destroy the water tank. Yes, sir. Let's go. Ah! 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 One more sack and the last. Take your time. I'd rather hurry. I'd hate to get caught after all you and I have been through. You won't get caught, Mr. Cloud. Come on. Hurry up there, Dennis. Major! Major! It's Mackenzie. He's coming in with his patrol. Let's get out of here!
the night of July 23rd, five days out of Fort Clark. The first chance to rest for all but Mackenzie and his scout. With the prisoner alive in Mackenzie's hands, the deadly chess game had shifted. Mackenzie knew that now Duncan had to wait for his opponent to move. Did you locate them? Behind rocks, high up, open sands below. Mm -hmm. Sergeant, how's the ammunition? About uh, seven, eight rounds each man, sir. Uh, our prisoner patched up? Yes, sir. Rest and easy. I'll talk with him. Stand easy, trooper. You're a little young to be running with a wolf pack like Duncan's, aren't you? You're gonna die, Mackenzie. Slow and thirsty. When and where Major Duncan decides you will. He gave his life to the Army, but he made one mistake, Mackenzie. He proved he was a better soldier than you are. So you trumped up charges and drummed him out of the Army. So that's the way he's telling it. I suppose you want to tell me it's all a bunch of lies. I'll do better than that. Kill Eagle. I am Chiricahua, elk family. My father was chief, not hostile, but scout like me. Major Duncan ordered whole tribe move out for new reservation. Major Duncan fought your Chiricahua. No fight, just walk. Men, women, children into desert. You know what devil trap is? Sun burn like fire, no water, slow death. I know the story of that battle, the real one. 300 of you red devils against Major Duncan and one patrol. He told me about it. You listen. My father was chief. He begged for his people one drop water. But your major lead them into devil trap. All die but one. All but one. Indian lies! Kill Eagle! Kill Eagle! Shall I put him under guard, sir? No. That won't be necessary. They're not lies, son. Kill Eagle was with that one survivor. I found him and brought him back to the fort. Makes no difference what you say, Mackenzie. You won't get out of this alive. A lot of Howard Duncan has rubbed off on you, hasn't it? Yes, and I'm proud of it. Well, that's natural. I remember the picture Howard Duncan carried when we were on patrols together. He was real proud of you. Real proud of his kid brother. Kill Eagle. Kill Eagle, I'm gonna put you on your honor to guard this man. You can't leave me here alone with him. Kill Eagle, I have a plan. But your anger can destroy it. Don't think of this man as Duncan's brother. Think of him as the Judas goat that's gonna lead his brother to slaughter. Sergeant. Colonel! Stand easy, boys. You checked the entire area? Yes, sir. Nothing much around but some coal oil for their lamps. What's in there? Bags, sir. Bags? Yes, sir. Empty water bags. Water bags? Sergeant, have each man fill two of these water bags and conceal them in his bedroll so nobody will know we're carrying them. We're going to continue to follow him, sir? Yes. Yes, we're going to follow him right into his devil trap. Morning, July 24th, six days out of Fort Clark. Mackenzie was ready for his counter move against the renegade, ex-Major Duncan. Everything in order, sir. Each man has two fill water bags in his bedroll. They've been instructed to drink from their canteens at will? Yes, sir. They'll throw them away on the trail as you ordered. Destroy the water tank. Sir? From this point on, there's no retreat for us or for Duncan. Destroy it. Forward! Hello! Kenzie's pulling out.
right, that narrows it down to the supply we carry in our canteens. Collect all the canteens, Mr. Cloud. I will personally ration the water supply. Get ready to follow them. Follow them? It's a 20-mile ride to the border. Let's get the goal there. We're not leaving my brother. Look, you made the roof. He took his chances like the rest of us. It could have been me. Anybody. Mr. Cloud, if my brother dies, you'll die with Mackenzie. And I say kill him now and get it over with. You're stupid, Cloud. You're saddle trash. What would you know of pride? Of the shame of being made to wallow in the dirt before your own officers and your men. That's why I want to see Mackenzie tortured in the burning sun. Now do you understand? Lead on, Major Duncan. July 25th, the seventh day of broiling desert wasteland. Mackenzie led out, knowing Duncan would have to follow, into this furnace where every drop of water was worth its weight in diamonds. Ordinarily, a trooper could be shot for wasting water. But this was a special patrol, under special orders. That's the third empty canteen. I never figured McKenzie to be a fool about water. Colonel McKenzie's anything but a fool. Canteens were dropped in the trail where they can be seen? Yes, sir. I don't think Duncan can miss spotting them. Duncan will be holding back to conserve his water while we use ours up. On the other hand, he's got to make his move pretty soon to rescue his brother. Kill Eagle. Double back and check for us. All right, Sergeant. We've got to go into that canyon and make it look as though we're going through it. Another canteen. I was sure there was no water this side of the mine, but Mackenzie must know there is some. From now on, we force march till we catch up with them. Go on! Yeah! Late morning, July 25th, saw Mackenzie carefully setting his trap. While Kill Eagle back trailed to scout the oncoming Duncan, Mackenzie positioned his men in the scanty shade behind the rocks. Coming fast. When I give the signal fire one volley, no more. Just enough to make him take cover. If I fire again, shoot to kill. You won't have a second chance. All right, Sergeant, take your position. Trooper, guard him with your sidearm. I'll take the rifle. <laughs> are all scrambling. Can't read the signs. The signs were obvious to Duncan. Mackenzie must have rested here while his scout searched ahead for water. The only logical place would be the floor of the canyon ahead. Ah, ah. Mackenzie was ready to spring the trap, and his major weapon was in position too, the burning sun. Kill you if you desert in the face of the enemy. Take cover.
the deadly waiting game went on. Mackenzie depended on the heat to drive Duncan out of cover, and the sun was slowly but surely doing its merciless job. We've got water and he hasn't. Rustle up one of our water bags and let's relax. Fred. Without food, a man could hold out for days. Without water, his lifespan becomes a few seemingly endless agonized hours. Let's find some shade. Keep low. One hour passed. Another. Two o'clock. Everything seemed to move in the undulating waves of heat. Everything but the sun. Three o'clock. Now the angled sun rays shriveled the last inch of shadow from Duncan's rock barricade. Mackenzie knew the outlaw's only hope was night. And to Duncan and his men, that sundown might as well be a hundred years away. Mackenzie had seen the scorching desert do its work before. The outlaw's hopes narrowed to three chances. Die behind the rocks, surrender, or make a wild run for the canyon mouth. They would have to decide soon. And Mackenzie was ready. Duncan! Why don't you come out? You haven't got a chance. Look, we're rope meat any way you look at it, so why not make a run for it? You want to play soldier, Duncan? Play it yourself. I'm still in command, Mr. Cloud. You just lost your command again, Mr. Duncan. They're getting set. Remember, we've only got a few rounds of ammunition left. If they come out, every shot's got to count. Let's make a run for it. I'll cover you. Duncan's horse bolted, sir. He's trapped behind that boulder. I take, Sergeant. We circle around. Now. He's my responsibility. Duncan? Duncan, you're all alone. What's your choice? Die of thirst or surrender? Toss out your gun first, then come out with your hands up. For the last time, Duncan faced his former commanding officer as a prisoner. And Mackenzie was ready for anything but Duncan's almost pathetic demand to receive every military courtesy accorded an officer of his rank. 